to see you guys. Turn to your neighbor and just with a big smile, because we don't see smiles as much as we used to, but we can tonight, and just wish them a Merry Christmas. <laughs> yes. Hi, guys. We are so happy that you've joined us here tonight. Whether you've joined us in person or online, we want to say thank you for coming and Merry Christmas. It should be a great night tonight, and we're so happy that we get to do this together with you guys. So I am Olivia. I do the children's ministry here, and we wanted to have a special family service where you get to hang out with your family and kids, but we know that this can be kind of long. So we made your kids special activity booklets with stickers, pens, fruit snacks, the whole nine yards. So if you are a kid who did not get one, please raise your hand if you are under the age of 10. Sorry. <laughs> and the ushers will bring them to you. Otherwise, we hope you guys enjoy that. We also have nursery open to ages three and under. So for our really little guys who may struggle through this, you are welcome to drop them off at nursery anytime during this service. That's awesome. I think for the adults, we should have got a, a coloring thing of just Tim's head, and you can put whatever hair you want on his head. <laughs> Who would like that next year? Next year. Okay, next year. Um, <laughs> if you're new or if you haven't been here for a while, I just wanted to say just welcome. We're all family. Who here ever was here for the first time? Right, you have to think about that. This is what I'm saying. Were you, who here, put your hand up, if you ever had a first time here at Canyon View? Yeah, everybody. So <laughs> that if you're here, you're just already part of our family. We want to welcome you. And if you have any questions, let us know. And everybody online that just like in the old times when Paul wrote letters, the Apostle Paul and the Holy Spirit worked through letters, the Holy Spirit continues to work through letters and video and online streaming. So if you're watching online, just prepare your heart to be overwhelmed with the love of God. Right? Okay, so let's do this. Let's stand, and what we're going to have is some time of worship. We'll have a few more announcements for you. Then Pastor Kirk is going to share an encouraging message for us. At the end, we'll have a, a little thing we do with some candle lighting, and then uh, we'll uh, go about our day, and so that's kind of what we're looking at here. We'll be together for about an hour. So, it's Christmas. This is the year we all need Christmas. <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen? So I have something to tell you. For I bring you good news of great joy, that for unto us a child has been born, and he is the Savior, Christ the Lord. And amen. All right, let's worship God.
Christ the Savior, Christ the Son, Christ Redeemer, He is come. Christ the Sovereign, Christ the Just, Christ the Victor, He is one. Christ the Savior, Christ the Son, Christ Redeemer. Lord, we come today to celebrate you, to celebrate your birth, to celebrate your arrival. Beyond that, we come to celebrate a Savior. We come to make all things right, to bring us into relationship with the Father. So this Christmas service, this Christmas time, regardless of the noise around us, regardless of everything else, we fix our eyes on you, and we worship you, and we thank you. We celebrate you this morning, Jesus. We worship you and we love you. And all God's people said, amen. Hi again, everybody. We are so happy that you've joined us. And one thing that I love about the Christmas holidays is Christmas traditions. We have them all across Christmas time and all sorts of different things that we do. But one thing I love about Canyon View is our Christmas traditions here. And one of those traditions that we have is called Boxing Day. Now, not the kind where you punch somebody in the face. It's the kind where we take food to people all throughout our community. Now, this year, we don't have food. We have beautiful bags. And they were made beautiful by our lovely children here at Canyon View. So they decorated the cards and added some bows to them. Mm -hmm. and the they look purpose, awesome. Yeah, I know. I'm so proud of them. So the purpose of these is to take them out to our community and to bless them in some way. So you will find these on your way out, and we ask that you take one, pray about it, and see where God would have you take it. It could be for someone you know or even someone you don't. So that is the purpose of our Boxing Day. And then another wonderful tradition we have here at Canyon View is where we know that you guys are a very generous church. You have blessed us so much throughout this year, and we are so thankful. But on Christmas, we like to use that generosity for something amazing, and we call that Benevolence Fund. Yeah. So we take the money that is donated to Canyon View for our, all of our Christmas Eve services, and we use that throughout all of next year to help all sorts of people in our community and valley. So what you are going to do is you're going to find, you can donate online, you can donate out in the lobby, or you can text in, I believe, possibly. 
And so what we do with that is we take that and give that to families in need all throughout next year. And so that is above and beyond our regular tithe. But we have been able to do incredible things this year with what you donated last year. And we can't wait to see what we're going to do with it again this year. So It was about $30,000 plus to help this community this year with things like utility bills, people who are getting their heat shut off, their water shut off. And not only do they get the support they need, but they get it with the love of Christ and they hear the gospel. So it's not just humanitarian need, it's humanitarian and most importantly, spiritual. We specifically targeted this last year single moms with a couple kids under five and the amount of uh, kind of blessing that you guys gave this year was really incredible. One particular story, someone is about to get evicted, didn't know they qualified for some programs. Our benevolence team met with them, and that single mom didn't uh, 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 have to worry about getting evicted. She actually got an upgrade into a nicer apartment and a safer place for her kids because of connecting with the benevolence team. And that's part of your friends and families here. So little things like that are big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So. so those are some of our wonderful traditions here at Canyon View. I think Kirk might have drawn that one. We can only hope. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, hey, want to just do one other thing quick uh, before we pray is to invite you next week. If you have been kind of keeping a little distance during this time, it's understandable. And those online, we totally understand that. But we are starting and continuing again next week. We'll be gathering this Sunday at 9 and 11. And then at the start of the new year, we're launching a five-week series that we learn from Jesus about our emotional health. How to be a person of integrity. How to be a person of good character. What do we do when our like, feelings don't match what we say? And oh, just incredible things here in there. And how to be a healthy person as we follow Jesus. So here's what I want to ask you. Every now and then over the course of years in ministry, I've asked people, just give us five weeks in a row and see how Jesus changes your life. And so we're, we're putting it out there again. When we start this new year, give us five, five weekends in a row of hearing about Jesus and our emotional health, and I believe some great things are going to happen. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Okie dokie. Oh, you guys are, good. are so good. What else do we got to do? Are we good? Yeah, so that about wraps okay. up our announcements for tonight. And more important than benevolence, more important than going out and sharing love of community is prayer. And so will you guys pray with me? Jesus, we thank you so much that you are here with us. We thank you for the amazing things that you've done this year and the amazing things you're going to continue to do next year. We pray that you would speak to people tonight, that they would have amazing encounters as they go out and bless our community with these bags. We also pray that you would multiply and bring abundance to the Benevolence Fund. Jesus, that we would be able to do amazing things for your kingdom next year. We ask that you would speak to us tonight and that we would feel your love and your heart in a brand new way. Amen. One of the things you're going to experience right now is we believe that there is a renaissance. There is a reawakening of the creative in the people of Canyon View in this valley. What that means is there is an artist in everyone, whether it be poetry or painting or writing or coding on the computer or whatever it might be. And one of our strong young men created a poem of sorts for us. And we're going to enjoy that now before Pastor Kirk comes up. Enjoy this video. Where was God in 2020? In the virus, in the racial tension, in the job losses, or maybe the election? Fear still rages across our country and consumes our homes and land. The worse it gets, the more we feel enslaved to mandates and demand. So in all of this, we need to see our Father's silver lining. But right now, those five Advent candles are the only things still shining. Missed graduations, empty funerals, masks on, six feet apart, schools meeting digital. Between the division and the conspiracy theories, there's only one thing that rings in my memory, that freedom. It was the joy that held no envy, and now the silence makes me shout till I'm empty. God, where are you? I just can't wait for you to come through and end all this. The way things have been going, can it really be Christmas? Has he really been sitting on the sidelines this entire year, watching us fall apart? What happened to you and I will never part? That doesn't seem possible considering we've always been in his heart. It was, I will never leave you nor forsake you from the start. So among the wreckage left behind by this year, our hope and our faith tell us he is still here. So take heart, my friends, and count it all joy, because he was here. 
Where was God in 2020? He was with the brokenhearted. From every lost soul, dark mindset, life lost to those whose faith had departed. He was in every home when isolation ran deep. His mercy does not distance. His grace does not retreat. And in the biggest question of the year, why did he shut the church? Well, he never did. The church actually never closed. He was in every iPad, cell phone, and every church home. He was in every box of food delivered. He was with every believer, every sinner, every father, every mother, every son, every daughter. And he is still in every rising and setting sun. He was in the battle, whether it was lost or won. He is in every hospital with the young and the old. See, our God never left. He just changed how he spoke. To tell you the truth, He's bigger than 2020. 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born in Bethlehem due to a government mandate, and he took it all and gave us a clean slate. And when he rose from the grave, he said, I'm not done yet, and those words still rain out today. And in a world where it felt like everything was crashing down, love was crashing in. The fear that you're holding, he died to rescind. He's still pursuing you, he's calling you home, and he says, do not fear, you're never alone. So where was God in all the unrest? He was closer than you'll ever know. He was closer than your breath. Merry Christmas. Nathan, that was awesome, bro. That was awesome. I saw that at our service review at 2 o'clock, and I said, I think I'll just say amen. Merry Christmas. Let's go home. But this is... Uh, for those of you that are online with us, and for all of us, this is kind of the, uh, the climax of our Advent series, and we've been talking for four weeks of Advent meaning a time of preparation, a time of expectancy that Jesus is coming. And so the first week, four weeks ago, Corey spoke, and who of you astute students of the Word remember what Corey talked about? hope. Very good. And then what about the second week? What did Pastor Corey talk about? Peace. Peace out. And then there was this little Asian guy. Joy. I can't remember. Thanks for telling me. And then love. Amor. We had Dr. Love himself, Eric Gonzalez, who shared with us an amazing message of love. And so as Advent comes to a climax here in Christmas, it is the time that we focus on the greatest news of the world. Now, I've got to admit that uh, this Christmas... Oh, by the way, I'm Kirk Yamaguchi, and uh, I'm co-senior pastor here, and it, I, it is just such a joy to be able to share with all of you for Christmas Eve. And, you know, on Christmas Eve, I, I've talked to people out in the community, and I've heard a lot of people say, I can't believe it's Christmas already. It just, like, crept up on me. I went and bought my wife her Christmas present today, by the way. There are other people that, you know, they, they say that it just doesn't feel like Christmas. It's just the world is just gone berserk. And so how do we find anything merry in the midst of this season today? I know for a lot of people, you probably haven't even thought about Christmas there's just too much noise. There's just too much pandemonium going on out there, especially if you're watching the news all the time. Christmas was probably the last thing on your mind. But one thing I, I think is very clear, and it's probably not too much of a stretch, that in 2020, as Nathan so clearly talked about, it has been such a bizarre world that I think there is probably a common emotion that everyone in this room and everyone that's listening and watching online, we've all experienced this at some junction over the past year, at least since March. What do you think that emotion is? It's fear. Fear is something that 
can come into our senses and it creates reactions within us. During the COVID pandemic initially, I, I, I've got to admit, when I was listening to all of the, uh, the medical experts and talking about how uh, contagious this virus is, and especially how the virus can attack the lungs, I've had some lung issues in the past. And so I was thinking, because I heard one doctor say that if you get COVID, that you could die within five days. And I thought, dang, five days could be all that I have left. And so when you think about that, what can occur in our soul is fear can rise up. I know that when the shutdown came, the economy had to shut down. And so many of us were thinking, how long am I going to be able to work? Will I be able to provide for my family anymore? And so as fear comes and it attacks our economic world, it does weird stuff to us. There's the racial tension. There's the conflicts and the rioting, the political polarization that we see all the stuff that is, it feels like our country is just imploding right before our very eyes. I got to say, it's not the same country that I grew up in. And then the worst thing of all, this is the thing that I struggle with the most as I look at 2020, is how in the world did the Denver Broncos get so bad? Amen. <laughs> so with so much fear that's out there, and again, it comes in varying degrees, that there are moments that it's just a flitter, but at moments, it can overcome us. How do we respond to it? How does the world respond to fear? What do they do? They go to Walmart, and they buy all the toilet paper they can find. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around that. Or we go to the store and we buy up all the guns, we buy up all the ammunition, and they, we think if they're going to come take my place, I'm going to take as many out before they take me. And if you don't have any guns, you got toilet paper. Just pepper them with toilet paper. Some of us have seen people respond in anger. I mean, it's just, it's just at the surface. Jane told me that just last week she was at the store, and she's wearing her mask, and she's got a thin face, and so it's hard for her to keep the mask on her face. And so the mask slipped down below her nose, and the guy accosted her verbally because the mask wasn't covering her nose. She goes, eee. Merry Christmas. How do we find anything merry in a world that's gone literally berserk? How do we find anything merry in our lives this Christmas? So when we pose that question, how, where do we find the merry in our Christmas this year? With so much threat, with so much uncertainty, with so much tension, where do we find any sense of joy? Now, Franklin Roosevelt, when he ran for president in 1933, the country was in the grips of the Great Depression. And Roosevelt said in his speech, his campaign speech, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And Franklin Roosevelt was nominated president. And he led us through World War II. But what about today? How do we face our fears, and how do we find Mary in our Christmas? I found this guy, his name's Professor Gordon T. Smith, and he wrote about this issue of fear. And he said, it has become apparent to almost every spiritual writer of our generation that the greatest threat that the church faces in a secular age is not something external to it. 
Not secularism, Islam, or any other ism, or external agent, but something internal, namely fear. Pretty profound what he said. And in his book, he quoted Henry Nouwen, that Henry Nouwen said that we live in a culture of fear. And in response to that, Smith said, fear has become, come back, fear has become so pathologically present that it is no longer even recognized. It has come to be so part of the air we breathe that we do not even know it is there. And he says, and secular society has no capacity to look truthfully and critically at the source of this paralyzing fear. So how do we overcome our fear in a season that is so challenging? Be comforted. My friends, for you that are here and for you that are online, be comforted in knowing that God knows our fear. In the Christmas account of the Bible, when you look at the New Testament, New Testament God addressed the issue of fear, of fear in four people. In Matthew 1.20, there's this guy named Joseph who was engaged to Mary, who became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. And an angel visits him. And in Matthew 1.20, it says, An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear. Then there's this guy named Zechariah. He was going to have a child with Elizabeth. They were old farts like me. And the, the Lord visited him by sending an angel. And in Luke 1.13, it says, But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. And then, Mary, when the angel appeared to her, in Luke 1.30, we, we see, And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And then, finally, in Luke 2, an angel appears to the shepherds in the field, and they're filled with great fear. And the angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. I was thinking, if I was that angel, I'd begin to start feeling really insecure about myself. Because everyone I appear to, they shudder in fear. I think when people see me, they just laugh at me. But as we've been emphasizing this whole Advent series, the significance of the Christmas season, it's not the traditions. It's not the music, although we love the music, don't we? It's not the movies, although we love watching the movies. And it's not in the presence, although we love to get that special present. But the significance of Christmas is found in how heaven came to earth. Heaven to earth. This, in this season of expectancy, we can't overlook the significance of this event. Heaven came to earth through God himself becoming man and coming and dwelling among us through Jesus Christ. He came to bring the greatest gift of all to those who would open up their minds and their hearts to it, and that is God's presence. Not a present that he gives you, but his presence of his life coming within us. It's receiving the kingdom of God in our hearts. That is the greatest gift of Christmas. You know, when Jesus began his ministry, at the outset, his first sermon, he said this in Matthew 4, 17. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
and he's talking about himself. I am here, he's saying. God has arrived. In fact, Jesus talked about the kingdom of God in the New Testament in the Gospels 32 times. So repentance is a changing of our mind. It's a changing of our will. It's opening up a reception within our hearts of the presence of God through the coming of Christ. Now I want to go back to this encounter of Joseph with that angel. And we see, let's go back to Matthew 1, 20 through 21. And it says, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. That's a powerful message of Jesus has come to not just to save us from sins, not just to bring us the gift of eternal life, but to allow us to experience the kingdom of God in each of our hearts. And one of the ways that fear rises up within us is by the fear of the unknown. We hate doing new things because we don't know how much it's going to cost us. And so the fear of the unknown is we just don't know what's around the corner. Now Joseph, if we can imagine, when he heard that the woman that he was engaged to, that he hadn't had any sexual relationship with yet, and that she had conceived a child. He had to be thinking, this wasn't the plan. This is going to ruin our reputations. This child is going to grow up as an illegitimate child. And so, of course, he's filled with the great fear of the unknown, of what was to come. And so fear comes to us in the same way because we can't see what's around the corner. Will our world remain in shutdown forever? Will I have to wear a mask until I go to my grave? How will we survive the economic downturn? Will the Broncos ever have a winning season again? But God tells Joseph, don't be afraid, dude. And why? Because God was in it. God was orchestrating. God was moving through the whole situation with Mary. And that God was still in control. That is the message for us today. Just as the angel pointed Joseph to see that through this act of the Holy Spirit with Mary, the kingdom was coming to heaven. The good news this Christmas, my friends, and the greatest gift of all, and the means to overcome our fears, the means to overcome the fears that can be literally paralyzing to us at times, is for us to open our minds in our hearts, to the presence of God to come into our hearts. To open our hearts up to Jesus himself and invite him in. He's saying the same thing that he said to the angel, or that the angel said to Joseph. He's saying the same thing to every one of us in this room and everyone that's watching online. Do not be afraid. The blessing of Christmas and the means to overcome our fears is to know the one who came to overcome our fears. He has come. He is here. And he is coming again. I think that deserves an amen. <laughs> Ultimately, our fear can be overcome in knowing Jesus' invitation is for everyone in this room, 
It doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter where we've been. It doesn't matter our background, our education, our economic status. Jesus has come, and he's inviting us to have relationship with him, to receive the greatest gift. In John 10.10, Jesus said, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The good shepherd is the one that takes us into green pastures. The good shepherd is the one that leads us to the abundant life. The good shepherd is the one who leads us beside still waters and refreshes our souls and overcomes the fear. So just as the angel comforted Joseph in his fears, he is here. He's here tonight to give us his peace. He's here to remind us, friends, that even though the world has seemed to gone amok, he is still in control. He's got this. None of this is a surprise to God, even though it was to all of us. And God will restore all things. He will wipe away every tear. He is the source of the peace that conquers all of our fears and all of our anxieties. How it will happen, I don't know. When it will happen, I don't know. But the point is, is he's here now, and we just need to receive him. The great news of Christmas is Jesus is here. Again, Jesus is coming again. Jesus is the King of kings. Jesus is the Lord of lords. Jesus is sovereign, and he reigns and he rules, not only for eternity, but he reigns and rules in our hearts right now, if we receive it. God bless you this Christmas. I just pray that God would give you great peace in knowing that he is sovereign and in control. Hey. Mm-hmm.
even as we experience hope, peace, joy, and love. There are so many people that you might know, your neighborhood, around the world that are still experiencing darkness. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. For those that follow me, you will not walk in darkness, but you shall be in the light. The Christ candle is the candle of most importance in our Advent as it is not hope and peace and joy and love that we chase after. We chase after an intimate relationship with Jesus, the light of the world, and the symptoms of or the attributes of that are a life reflected with hope, peace, joy, and love. It is the intimacy of Christ that changes everything. So take a moment and just reflect on all that Christ has done. His birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, his sending of the Holy Spirit because he loves you so much. And this Christmas right now, if you've not chosen to follow this Jesus, to be an apprentice of his between you and God right now, just take a moment to say yes to that. Holy Spirit, come. Matthew 5.16 Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And glorify your Father who is in heaven. You see, we're called as followers to see the light and be the light. See the light and be the light. And every Christmas we illustrate this differently. And tonight I'm going to ask you to participate with me in an illustration before we go home. You know, you've probably been to services where there's candles. You have a different form of candle. Uh, many of you brought it with you. I'd like you to actually, believe it or not, in church, get your phone. <laughs> and your phone is going to have a little button on it, many of them. If you don't have this type of phone, it's okay. they are probably more peaceful. Um, I want you to hit that light just like that all around the room. But put it low and keep it kind of hidden for right now. Keep it real low, like on the towards the carpet. Go ahead, take your phone out, hit your light on, and point it down. And you see what happens as apprentices of Jesus, this valley, your neighborhood, your home, your kitchen, that when we <laughs> allow the light of Christ to come in and through and out of us, and it actually is no longer hidden, and you lift it, pointing it up, now everybody do that now, it absolutely changes the room. It changes the room, guys. One light after another. So let's stand. Let's worship this first verse again with your phone light on. You can wave it around if you want, but keep it shining.
with your phones out. At Canyon View, we believe in being very practical. And so what I want you to do, if you have your phones, I want you to go ahead and open up your texting app or your texting feature if you have that. If you don't, it's okay. If you don't know what that is, I really, really am inspired by you. And I want you to open it up. You should be at a two part. Who are you going to send this text to? I want you to think of someone that doesn't live in your home. And in a moment, we're all going to text somebody. At the exact same time, we're going to push send. I want you to think about right now, who could use a little hope? Who could use a little love, a little random moment? Go ahead and type who you want to send it to. And then type in Merry Christmas on your phone there. Auto, auto type is great. And under Merry Christmas, whatever's appropriate, if it's I love you, or if it's I miss you, or if it's I believe in you, or if it's Jesus loves you, this isn't a trivial moment. The Holy Spirit works through texting of encouragement. All right, give you about 15 more seconds. Think of someone. Maybe it's someone you haven't seen for a while. I don't, I don't see my brother Dean enough. He's eight years older than me. Great big brother. Love him. I miss him. So that's who I'm texting right now. I'm texting Merry Christmas. I'm still better looking. Or something like that. Ready? You guys ready? Over here? You guys are young. You're still not ready? All right, guys. One, two, three. Lord, may that encouragement speak more than we can imagine and spark conversations about you. And all God's people said. You see, it's a practical idea that we are to be the light of the world and the light in the Grand Valley, and you guys are that. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord overwhelm you in this Christmas over the next couple days. May he inspire you to be a person of peace. And may he, may he shine his face upon you. And all God's people said to that, amen. amen. Feel free to hang out, uh, talk with folks you haven't seen for a while. Let's thank Pastor Kirk for his message. Merry Christmas, you guys. Merry Christmas.